Hello, and welcome back to Where Are All My Friends. This week is with David Banks, who is an actor, which is a little bit outside of the norm for this podcast, but it was actually a really insightful, fun conversation for that exact reason. This podcast for me has always been about talking to people who are doing what they love and making a living out of it. Primarily focused in music and entertainment, but I've always been really intrigued by just that topic in general. And sitting down with David was really cool because there was a crazy amount of parallels to music and acting that I didn't really know. So it was really fun for me to come at this conversation and ask all these like, rookie questions or not really knowing and he answered them very well and he shared a lot of insight on what that career is like so i think outside of just hearing the parallels and it being an interesting discussion if anybody's interested in that as a career cool conversation cool podcast to hear so let me know if you like stuff like this i'm always interested in expanding my horizons but for right now let's get right into the episode Enjoy. Are you a big goals guy? Huge. Yeah? Huge goals guy. Yeah. Like I, a one year, three year, five year, like break I don't it down. do it. Like some people have it where they do like monthly, weekly, uh, daily, month. I just set it and I set them for the year. Okay. You know, and I, I start a little by that, but I usually do about like maybe 10 to 15. But my thing is my, I love checking them off. Oh my God. You know what I mean? It feels yeah. so good to check them off. And some are like, I guess, I guess tangible. Some are like something I can do right away. Some are out of my control. As mm-hmm. far as the business and all that stuff, and you know, obviously getting a better agent, booking X amount of jobs, that's not really in my control. Yeah, but you know, um, yeah, I love it, and I think what they, I, I read somewhere that you have a forty-four percent chance more of achieving your goals if you write them down. That's yeah, 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 yeah. And then there's another study of like there was some crazy like Harvard graduates or something like smart, qualified people, and it was like even them, the likelihood of them accomplishing their goals mm-hmm. was substantially higher yeah. from the ones that wrote them down. Yeah. And there were so many people that didn't write their goals down. And you're just like, what? Because well, you forget them. Yeah, I want to say because yeah. always, they're always there, but you're not chasing them. You don't look. And these guys tell you like, look at them every day. Yeah. Yeah. Look yeah, yeah, at yeah. Them. Dude. Just visualize it. I'm big on that. I have a Huge. vision board. It, it, nice. Yeah. Yeah. I know that sounds cheesy and it's no. not like, it's not like please manifesting gods. Yeah. <laughs> like, but I just like, I think about I try to put it all together in my head and it's like, what are the things that like inspire you out of your mind? Like, what are the things where you look at it and it gives you more energy than it takes away? Dude, And I think about that. So when you see the tangible, right? Like Uh be it the dream car, the dream house, or like even like the feeling you get, like if you, if there's like a certain thing that represents a feeling, like I I really like to see that. Oh, absolutely. Those feelings can really, they come and go out of your life. A music can do that to you. A good song that you put literally on repeat all day long that just charges you. Yeah. And it's just, it feels so good. And I can usually go from day to day where I feel like super charged and motivated one day. And the next time I'm like, eh, not so much. But mm-hmm. you know, but it's, that's why it's important to keep looking at them. Oh, that's right. That's what I want to do. I got to do that. I got to hit that goal. Do you break them down? Like, do you have like uh, categories, like personal, like self, uh, like I want to be at this body weight at the gym or something like that. Ooh, that's a and good one. Like, 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 uh, career They're relationships, all kind of scattered financial. In there. It's, like a, it's like a collage full okay. of different crap. You know what I mean? Where okay. It, it can be gym wise. Like I wanted to hit, I had this weird, crazy passion. Cause I've always been like 180 to 185. And I'm like, I want to hit 200. And then I hit 200 pretty easily during COVID. I'm like, now I want to hit 210. Mm. <laughs> then I hit that. I'm like, oh, oh, okay, this is easier than I thought. Let me hit 215. Wow. Then I got a little obsessed and I was like, okay, I get, I'm getting too big. So yeah, I kind of yeah, went yeah, back yeah. down a little bit lower and I'm like, okay. And my brother was like, he goes, dude, you, you don't look like you can be funny anymore. Like, you do comedy. There's nothing funny about you being this 215 You're too pound. strong to be funny. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, I guess like, maybe you're right. And I, he showed me some pictures and stuff. He's like, dude, this is how I see you. I'm like, yeah, that's not a good look. Sometimes you, know? you see yourself and like that, like you just need the photo or the video of yourself and you're like, oh. Oh, you're right. Whoops. Damn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oops. <laughs> because and I can see how some of these people get to the point where I guess girls can never be skinny enough. You know, they always want to be, I want to get down this this way, this way, this way. And we see them. It's like, what are you, you look great. What are you talking about? No, I'm fat. I'm like, oh, now you, you just yeah. want attention. But I'm like, wait a minute. Maybe she really does think she's. Because the way that dudes get obsessed with like, yeah. I need to be this jacked. Yeah. And girls are like, please stop. Please like, stop. You I don't need like to it. Chill. No, yeah. of course you do. You don't, just don't know it. Yeah, you know, everybody yeah, likes yeah. Big guys. And yeah. I'm like, oh, maybe you're right. Because it doesn't look really appealing. And it's just like, so I'm like, I think you find what works for you. But don't go too obsessive and crazy with it. Like I did, obviously. It was starting, you know, hit this and this and this goal. But I like that you fuck with goals, though. Yeah. Because uh, I'm big on that. I'm yeah. really big on that. I'm really big on writing them down. And yes. just like... 
I don't know, it just gives you something to to look at every day. Exactly. And something to work for. So what are some towards. like like I mean, obviously you don't have to get too personal, but like what are some that you hit and what are some like right now that you keep looking at where you're like, yeah. I wanted to okay, the big thing is I wanted to like getting out of debt. Yeah. When everybody Ooh. was just going crazy, struggling in the pandemic, I was like, okay, you know what? Everybody's maxing their credit cards. I was staying home as we all were, and I was watching all the commercials that were literally all alcohol related yeah. or apps to stay home and order food in. So yeah. all these people are literally drinking yeah. every day and getting food delivered to them. So mm -hmm. guess what? You're not being active. Yep. You're gaining the wrong kind of weight. Yep. And I'm like, I don't, I'm not going to, and I, I told myself, okay, I'm not going to drink at all. Not even a sip of alcohol during this whole pandemic. I'm going to go to the gym every single day. Yeah. And I'm going to train hard. It's going to be fun because I know there's no, there's at the time, there's no real work coming in. So I'm like, okay, now I have, it gives me something to kind of get up for. Yeah. Because other than that, I love naps. I love sleeping. I would have slept all day. So I'm like, okay. And I had this gym, like a private gym. My girl uh, has a friend that she goes, you know what? If you want to come every day between like two and four, it's mm -hmm. all yours. Oh, wow. Like, yeah, because so, like a lot of the gyms closed for a second. So you closed. had that nice. Yeah, all, my gym closed. Everything when I was going, I was like, there's nothing left except for this like CrossFit gym that, you know, and I'm not much of a CrossFit guy because I, I suck at cardio. But mm -hmm. so there's like a bunch of like free weights and stuff in there. And this, the, yeah, you just other like, make stuff. it work. I just made it work. Yeah. Damn, I was YouTubing so. all these different things of what I can do, what I can make work. Yeah. And I go every single day and it was just, it felt great. Damn. And that was one of those goals, you know? Yeah. Yeah. What I, where I like to start with the podcast is I think, well, I, I definitely want to preface and introduce you because you're not my standard guest. Mm -hmm. And I'm really excited about that cool. because when I started this podcast, it was basically just like, I want to talk to interesting, inspiring people sure. that have made a living doing what they love. Love it. I happened to know a bunch of people in music and mm -hmm. mostly music, but there was always the friends that have done things slightly outside of that and it's yeah. continued to grow. And the more I've done the podcast, the more I'm just obsessed with that. I'm like, it doesn't have to be music. Like it's just people doing what they love that have made a career out of it. Yes. So when I saw you, I was like, yo, like I've really never talked to anyone in like, like a full on like actor. And I was like, oh shit, this will be, I wonder if there's parallels because mm -hmm. like entertainment industry, it's totally. similar. Hand in hand. Yeah. But I was just like, yo, cool. Like, <laughs> let me know. So this is going to be a fun one for me. Like I might ask you some dumb questions. I don't know the totally. industry lingo. No, 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 but no rules. <laughs> I think just, this yeah. is going to be cool. Like I'm genuinely really curious. So, uh, for the listener, for anybody who doesn't know who you are, like a super quick explanation of who you are and what you do, and then we'll kind of backtrack and get deeper into the story. Sure. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm actually, it's funny you say music because I moved out to LA to to just full on dive into, you know, going to MI, PIT, mm. getting my, because I've been in metal bands my whole life. Oh, word? Yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. In NorCal. And then of course, NorCal wasn't the, there's a couple of bands that kind of came out of that scene, Vane and Metallica, but all these, a lot of them would kind of, you know, would shift in LA because that's where it was happening. Sunset Strip at the time and all stuff was just really big. Oh, the yeah. The 80s yeah, hair like metal theme the was just like, and all that. Dude, it was just, that was it. Like, we're talking like Dawkins, Motley Crue, Ozzy, Van Halen, Striper, Y&T, TNT, all these kind of bands that I grew up just loving and just posters on my wall and like, this is what I'm going to do. And literally, I made the move from NorCal to, so to Southern California and it was in, it was like the brakes were halt. Seattle music came in and oh, like screwed like everything. Grunge, the grunge, yeah. Alice in Chains, Pearl Jam, yeah. Nirvana. For me, there was nothing really fun about that. And it, it kind of lost the, the, I'm like, this isn't real. I'm not even really liking this music anymore. It's just not even really my, what's going on? What am I going to do? Yeah. I'm not going to do what I don't like to do. I'm not going to play music I don't like to play. Yeah. Because that whole thing I just said was so much fun. It was great. I had this knack for kind of finding the town's best guitarist who could like play the fastest and shreddest, and, you know, and who would just shred away and just play this great stuff. I'm like, okay, you're going to be in, you've got, you're going to be in. And I find these kind of great bands. And like I said, as soon as I got out of here, it was that it's like within the year, all that like MTV stopped playing that music. It was all just kind of done. And yeah. all my friends that were in these bands that were doing really well, some of my friends were playing like coliseums and stadiums are now playing like, little dive bars, if that. Then they're joining cover bands because just to make a little bit of money. And I'm like, whoa. Wow. And now it's, it's finally starting to kind of come back a little bit now, circle back a little bit. The most interesting part to me there is like a lot of times, like you can't stop genres from evolving. You can't yeah, stop right. trends from changing, right? Yep. Like 
we've seen that time and time again, and it's going to continue to do that in music because creatives are going to continue to push boundaries and it's going to evolve. 100%. But what's interesting to me is you didn't do, there was two things you didn't do there is one, you didn't like shake a stick at it like an old head and be like, it's not how it used to be. <laughs> yeah. Because you pivoted and you did something entirely different. Yeah. But you also acknowledged it's not what it used to be. And I don't want to do the new thing. Yeah. Where I think a lot of times people will get stuck in that, where then they'll like try to be something they're not, or they'll sure. try to ride the wave, or, you know, like they maybe will be in denial and they'll just be like, hair metal forever. And then yeah. everyone's like, dude, like I'm <laughs> stoked. You're stoked, but you got to move on. You got to move on. So that's interesting that you, you mm -hmm. had a point where you're like, okay, like my favorite music isn't the thing right now. Yeah. I don't want to do what's up and coming. So here's a pivot. And that brought you into acting. Exactly. Cause I figured, well, I didn't really like school very much. You mm -hmm. know, I wasn't my thing. I was like, okay, what am I going to do that's also somewhat related to the business, entertaining? I'm like, whoa. You know what I mean? I'm like, well, I could kind of, I guess I could kind of shift. My dad was in advertising. He worked at you know, Foot Cone Building and Gray Advertising, some of the biggest places that would do these huge commercials. So I was always around that. And I kind of saw what he did and how much fun he had creating these commercials. I'm like, wow, okay, this is kind of, this is, and this is cool. And this is also kind of an, along the same realm of, you know, you're entertaining people, you're kind of, it's fun. Uh, so I'm like, okay, why don't I try this whole thing? And yeah, of course, everybody's telling me, you're crazy. What are you doing? This isn't the right, you know, I don't, it's a lot of competition, really harsh, a lot of no's. But that kind of fueled me to want to really like, oh, okay, that's cool. Tell me no, because I want to do it. Because if you would have told me it was going to be easy and great, and let's say my dad had some kind of magical stick where he's going to be like, I'm going to put you in all my spots. It didn't work that way because he passed away before things really started taking off. And it was horrible. So there wasn't really this like, oh, I've got this in. I liked hearing the fact that someone was telling me, oh, you, dude, you're never, you know how competitive this is? You're never going to make it. I'm like, mm -hmm. right on. Because if someone were going to tell me, you're going to make it so easy, it's going to be great. I probably wouldn't have done it. No shit. You know what I mean? I like that. I like that. So, yeah. It's just this challenge that you kind of put on yourself in a weird, twisted way. And like, did you, did you have friends that were in acting? Like, Not like, one. I Not a single person. Because I, I just like, I try to put myself in those shoes and I'm like, damn, all right, full pivot. Like, here's this thing. Like, that's fucking scary, bro. Like, that's a, and, you know, scary. I don't even really like actors. <laughs> that, that's so, the weird thing. Now, and I don't mean this to be mean, but most of them, like if someone were to come down now and say to me, okay, hey, listen, you're going to enter a job where there's going to be people that are needy, narcissistic, self-centered, all about themselves, very, they're going to use you and it's all about me, 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 me. What are you going to give for me? What are you going to do for me? I'm not going to help you, but I want you to do things for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> those yeah. who you're hanging out with, are you kidding me? I'm not going to do that. Yeah. I'm going to be around those kind of people. Yeah. So that, unfortunately, that's kind of what you're like, I don't know if but I it was like a, this. It was like a very challenge accepted moment for mm -hmm. you where you're just like, all right, cool. Here's like the stereotypical actor types that I'm not down with. Yeah. Here's a bunch of people saying I'm not going to be able to do it. Uh huh. But also, here's me needing to find something, and I'm actually interested in something this. So I you were just do. like, start from scratch, yeah, figure it like, out. Or I can actually do that I enjoy doing, where I don't have to get up at seven and drive in traffic to a job I don't like. Yeah. And I always wanted to kind of bring that that my NorCal roots and vibe to the Southern California vibe, which is like we we're talking about earlier. Yeah. Which is very kind of what are you going to do for me kind of thing. Yes. You know, the yeah. survival mode. I love what you yeah. said there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the listener, like right before we started talking, we were just talking about like how interesting it is to experience and exist in LA. And I was, I was telling you, like, it, it feels to me like first you have survival and happiness. And mm -hmm. when you go to these small towns, everyone survive and it's easy to survive. So they're looking out for each other. They're happy, whatever. Yeah. But a lot of times in LA, it's so hectic just to pay rent and to figure out what you're going to do. You're in survival mode. Yeah. So you can get pretty selfish or you'll see people become selfish and tunnel vision and focus on them and narcissistic yes. or like whatever, like that projects in a bunch of weird ways. Or in a terrible so, way. Yeah. There's nothing nice about that. There's nothing likable at someone that doesn't want to do anything else for anybody else other than himself. So like, what was the, what was the beginning? Like, what was your, you're here, you're out in LA. Uh, you've decided to start acting. What happens? Like, did you go to like acting school? Did you go to like, uh, did you look up in the newspapers or online like yeah, audition? Back then there was like newspaper. Yeah, yeah. Like, were you going to like comedy clubs? Because don't you, you do a little bit of comedy as I well, right? I did a little right? bit too, just to kind of break the nerves. I oh, sucked okay. at it though. I sucked. Oh, really? Like, horrible. Okay. Like, I wouldn't pay to see me at all. I was really bad. But I just <laughs> wanted to break those nerves and just get it in front of people. And I figured if I can get it in front of like 
an audience of 50 or 100 people yeah. and survive yeah. and make it out alive and get my material and memorize it and maybe get a couple laughs here and there, there should be no reason why I can't get up in front of a room full of three people. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. Interesting. And just kick and dominate that room. Because I think I saw when I was doing my little, I do a little base homework. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that I saw that you did some stuff at Groundlings. Yeah, yeah. Which is like Will Ferrell is like super. That's like the improv. At the time, it was like the improv place to be before like UCB. Yeah. It took, you yeah. Know, an IO, Second City. And there's a ton of them now. But back then it was like Groundlings was the place. My friend, when I had literally like zero luck of getting in any bookings, any rooms, anything else, I friend said, you need to get into improv because it, it keeps you sharp. Yeah. It keeps you thinking quick on your feet, fast, funny, creative. So you have, you have a script and it's, here's the premise, here's what's going on. You can now add to it and kind of create things and make it your own. So if they're seeing 80, 80 sometimes or more people, on, I'm just going to say a commercial, for example, and 80 people come in and let's say 60% of them are doing the same exact thing, only saying what's written, nothing else. Right. And you get that rare elite few of maybe like 10%, 15% that kind of go off that page, make it their own, creative, make it funny, have a couple taglines on it, make you remember him or her. You know, it's like, well, this person, okay. Yeah. All of a sudden I started seeing the tables kind of shift a little bit. Like, well, my confidence was going up. Oh, they were yeah. saying, hey, we want you to stick around a little bit more. Can you read with this person too? And then read with this person. And then wow. I'm like, oh, something's working here. So comedy was a good foundation. For sure. Interesting. For sure. And so it wasn't like when you started doing improv or the groundling stuff, it wasn't like you're like, this is it. I'm going to go be a stand-up comedian. I'm going to go do this. It was more just like you starting to become comfortable with yourself and learning how to like. That's all it was is comfortable. And it's hard along the way because you're literally seeing half the people say, screw it. I can't do this. It's too much. I'm not, I, I couldn't make it. And they moved back home. Then I saw another section of my people I went to school with that were at groundlings were literally like blowing up. Like really? immediate, I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah, anyone that I would know, like from that era? One guy that was in the, what's that, that TV show called The League? Okay. Ram, Ram and Azzy, I forget his name, but he was like, and he was funny. He was good. He was quick-witted. He was sharp. He had that whole, whole kind of like, almost like the Boston vibe kind of thing in uh -huh. New York, kind of like, just very cocky and confident. Uh -huh. But his, his, I always say his tools were sharp in class because he was always on point with his improv. Like we would sit there and like two people were sitting there. Okay, now you're in a hair salon. Give me things that you would see in a hair salon. Go. And, you know, your partner would be like, scissors, hair dryer, stool, cape, hair, blow. And then some person would be like, uh, out, and you're out. So you'd get these people oh, that you have to that's how think. it goes? Like they're like, like, you have to go. And if you don't, then you're like out, now, like whatever. And then the next one would come in. That was what, yeah, our teacher had us do. But it was great because it would literally keep us so fast. And I would call it my groundlings ginkgo baluba day, where I would just like literally take ginkgo the week and do my groundlings. And if I had like a, a good day there and I could shift that into my next audition, which was sometimes like an hour after class or something, yeah. I was a lot sharper because of that. Yeah. You know what ooh, I mean? And ooh. I'll never forget a guy that I was reading with. He, he, I think he was brand new. He asked the session director in the room. He was like, excuse me, sir, um, are we allowed to kind of go off page a little bit and create and make it our own and improv a little? <laughs> and, he, and he goes... Do you want to book the job? <laughs> he goes, well, I'd like to. Well, then yes, do that. Because wow. <laughs> there's so many people that just literally take the script and that's it. And they're not going to go off the script at all. They're just going to say exactly what's written. Yeah. And that's fine. I've had a couple spots where I've walked in and the session director or the cast director walked in and she said, hey, you know what? This director is very much on the nose. He's also the writer. So don't create anything that's other than what's on that page. Mm. Don't make it your own. Don't add a button. Don't add a thing. And I've heard that maybe three times in the last 20 years, but for oh, the most part, wow. they, yeah. so we're talking 95% of the time. 99.9% of they want Own you to create, the... have fun and make it your own wow. and add some stuff to the writing. Cause sometimes the writing is amazing. Sometimes it sucks. Right. So right. they want you, to, you know, what can you, what kind of life can you bring to this role that yeah. we haven't thought of? We've been at the table for this on this for like hours and we can't, you know, and it's just, it's sometimes this, the story sucks. The script sucks. The 30 second commercial is horrible. But you kind of create something to it and you bring some magic to it. And they're like, oh, I never thought about that. And then before you know it, you book the job and then you get to on set. They've rewritten the script to what you've written in there. Yeah. Your little funny little taglines that you created. And they've written that into the script. I'm like, oh, I think I know why I got this job now. Funny. Yeah. You know? So like, did you have a moment like in the beginning of all of this, you're going to improv, you're kind of like learning this craft. 
Did you have a moment where you were like, okay, maybe this will work? Like, what was that first gig? Or like, where did it start to click where you're like, okay, I, I can do this? I, you know, I had more moments of thinking this is not going to work. No shit. Yeah, yeah. Because there was just so many no's. So many just getting really? fired by, by agents because it didn't work out. Sorry, this isn't a good fit. You know, I've been with them for like maybe six, seven months. Yeah. And going out every day auditioning, but nothing. No Whoa. bookings, no callbacks, nothing. And I was like dude, this is brutal. What is going on? What? This is my, people were right. This really is hard. Whoa. So I thought it was just haters just hating, saying, oh, this is hard. You're never going to make it. But I'm like, maybe there's some truth to this. This, 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 this is kind of hard. Maybe I won't. So like, <laughs> what, uh, like, like how many auditions, like if you're just throwing a number out there, like how many auditions do you do for like a single role you land? Like what's the ratio? Gosh. Well, I remember hearing once Matthew McConaughey said every 200 no's you get, you're lucky to get one. Yes. Fuck. That was, like yeah, that. that was brutal. That was in the beginning. But wow. I think as time goes on, the more you do this, the more connections you make, the more cast directors you get in with, the more comfortable you become, mm -hmm. the more people that are kind of rooting for you. I would say now it, it starts to shrink maybe like one out of every 40 or so. One still out of every, though. Yeah. Which still is like kind of, you know, you're running around. And even before pandemic, it was brutal. You drive around from here to Hollywood, to the Valley, to Santa Monica, back to the Valley, to back to Hollywood, changing as a cop in my car to a doctor to a to a, a quirky neighbor, to a weird, it just, it was like, dude, this is too much. And oh. I haven't eaten in like eight hours. Now I'm pissed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, waiting. yeah. And you're like trying to like be a vibe and a fun person and you're and starving. I've got to be a funny guy. And guess yeah, what? Yeah, and you forgot I'm, like you're halfway a cop and you're halfway a barber <laughs> and you're. <laughs> and I'm throwing this away. Okay, I'm done with this dialogue. I'm going to get into this dialogue now. Now I got to be an angry cop, a racist prick, you know, whatever. It's just like, yeah. whoa. And it's just so, it hits you and you're like, oh my gosh. And then, then, like I said, and this is why I shouldn't say I don't like actors, but I don't like many actors. And I say this because the ones that are, while you're in that waiting room, you're hearing the other actors telling you what they're doing, what they've got going on, what oh they just booked, what they just God. shot. I had an actor show me a check once. I'm like, in dude, the are waiting you? room? You're yeah. Like <laughs> I'm like, dude, are you really? And I just, I just, I just walked out. I was like, I, I, I'm done for the day. What's a waiting room look like? Like what? Like you show up? Like that's such a. You say that, and I'm like, oh, interesting. Like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's sort of like this. Uh -huh. It's very, it's, it's very nice. It's always like I said. It's the people that make it. And there's that quote that I love: "Hell is other people." <laughs> you know, <laughs> which is a little extreme, but it's because usually you can walk into a great room feeling good, your vibes up. You've heard some great music on the way here. I'm listening to, I don't know, Huey Lewis or Boss Gags or whatever, some funky stuff here yeah. and there. You know, and I'm like, I feel great. Yes, yeah, so I walk in the room I'm like, oh shit, there's that guy that I don't like. <laughs> That's, I know he's going to be talking about himself. He's going to pull the vibe down. Oh, for sure. And, and it just takes there. all the fun out of all of it. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really, I just kind of usually just go in, stay to myself, go find a little corner and just, you know, do my thing and then get out. Can you go like full like beats over the ear, like just noise canceling headphones? I told me that, and I keep forgetting I should do that. And I see a couple of guys that do that, just full on put that. I tried earbuds a little bit too, but people sometimes kind of like, hey, hey, can I ask you a question? <laughs> no <laughs> like, way. Dude. Holy yeah. crap. Hey, have you been here long? Hey, what's this? Have you got the sides yet? Because um, I've been here like an hour and I don't know. I'm like, well, yeah, he's, I've been here an hour too, man. Yeah. <laughs> you wow. know, so it's just like. Yeah, it, it's it's that's it's a little funky, and that kind of gets under your skin. And I always say, the thing that will make me probably want to stop doing this and quit is the other people around you that kind of try to really. I've had people like literally, almost like I had a guy once, and I'll never forget this. He was like, "Oh, dude, um, by the way, the director's in the room. I've already worked with him three times. Really cool guy." I, yeah, I'm like, uh, so uh, like insecurities just being projected a million miles an hour directly at you, and you're just sitting there, and you're like, "Man, I'm just trying to show up." And that's all I want to do. I just want to show up, and make a good, crap. you know, make a good impression. That's, Thank them for the time and leave. I don't need to hear what you know. I dare say that that's more aggressive with like the insecurities being projected than certain music and like settings like granted it's everywhere one thing you said that was really interesting to me of agents dropping talent because the way that i always think about music mm -hmm. is you can be a fully independent artist yeah and now more so than ever oh, that sure is now. working but like the traditional model like three pieces that i always think of of like what's your team mm -hmm. is your record label your booking agent and your like maybe like your your press or your publicity or yep. something like that right for sure booking agents like with music it's typically like you'll play shows you'll kind of start getting it going whatever mm -hmm. oh manager too of I course yeah, yeah 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 that's so very call important. call publicity manager <laughs> that's the triangle so um typically like you'll you'll kind of like you'll get a manager you'll get a label and if you get those then 
they'll know agents, whatever. Yeah. But it's it's not too common that agents will drop bands. It happens. Sure. But typically bands will drop agents if they're not getting tours. Yeah. So is that different with with film? Well, I get a little bit more at this point, more auditions and more work for my manager. Uh, we're very close. Um, but my agent, some agents, I've had agents in the past that don't like and almost insist like, hey, I do not work with managers. I'm going to get you what you need to get. If you have a manager, it's not going to work out. I Whoa. don't deal with managers. Yeah. And technically, managers shouldn't even be submitting you or sending you out anyway. That's the agent's job. I'm like, whoa, okay, this relationship's not going to work. <laughs> Whoa. So you have to find one that works hand in hand. Because they got to be synergistic. Okay, so that's Absol similar. Absolutely, yeah. Oh. And when I, you know, I want them all to be a unit, be a team that work together. Because if I'm booked out for something that the manager got me, both of them are going to get their money. So it, I told him, I said, listen, you're going to get your money. Whether mm -hmm. the agent or manager gets me, both of you guys are getting paid. It's going to go through the agent. And then once all the checks are cut and all stuff, ever get some money, I then pay my manager uh -huh. his percentage. So Is that, regardless if he gets me the booking or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So typically like in music, like a booking agent would be like anywhere from like 10, 15, maybe 20 on the high side. Yeah. And then a manager would be like 15, 20%. Is yep. that a similar? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, okay. managers, it has been 15%. Yeah. Agents take, if it's a union job, 10%. Uh -huh. Or if it's non-union, they typically take about 20%, uh, which is kind of high. So if you decide, that's why I would say, don't worry I have friends that come in, I need to get a manager and an agent. I'm like, well, no, no, maybe just start with a manager because keep yeah. in mind, if you have manager and agent, you have to pay 20% to the agent right. and then 15% to the manager. Right. So right away, that's 35% of your check gone yeah. on top of taxes. Yeah. So there goes, again, there, there goes that hustle mentality where like I have to work extra hard now because I've got to pay all these people. Right. Um, but I need to make sure my team works well together. But when I said like, for example, the agency that dropped me was because they they knew they were like a top agency. They had a lot of heavy hitting clients that were working all the time. Here comes mm. me, Mr. New Guy, mm. that doesn't know what he's doing at the time. Like, and wasn't producing any jobs. I wasn't getting any work. Right. So of course, they're like, hey. And back then, there weren't even. It was just through the mail. It's like, sorry, we've considered it. We're we're downsizing our roster right now, and you're not a part of it, kind of deal. It wasn't that harsh, but it was one of those. Yeah. Like, oh, geez. And I was so just like, oh, oh, yeah, I lost dude. my. What am I gonna do now? But again, there goes that, just that fight attitude again, where I'm like, okay, I'm going to go to their competitor and I'm going to get with them. No shit. Yeah. And I went with them and I was like, they're like, oh, you're with this agency? Why would you want to leave them? I can't tell them like they just fired me. Right, right. But I was like, well, I just keep hearing about you guys. And I keep seeing you guys in the signage sheets all the time, every day. They're like, oh, you really want to leave them? I'm like, well, yeah, you guys are, you know, better. And I'm like, Funny. oh, okay, we'll take you. So you got to be scrappy. Like when you're, yeah. when you are yourself as the artist or the actor, the talent, like, you really have to be pretty scrappy and like play the game. It's a game. There's a lot of that. It's almost like, I always say, it's a weird analogy, but I say it's almost kind of like dating mm. because the one you're really, really, really into and you yeah. really want, oh my gosh, this is, <laughs> she's like my type, yeah. everything I like, it's <laughs> awesome. That person doesn't really show much interest because you want them too much. Yeah. The minute you're like, ah, whatever. It's cool. yeah. It goes somewhere if it does. Not, I, don't, I don't really care. Yeah. I'm not looking for anything serious anyway, so that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. And then you have that. They're like, wait, 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 I think I want you. I think I like you now. That's so funny. So That's I, I guess there's just so many parallels. Cause like again, it's like when you're shopping an artist to a label, it's like uh -huh. again, it's that same thing. It's that dance. It's like that like dating dance yeah. of like oh, we like went to dinner and we talked and this is what they have to offer. Like, <laughs> yeah. That's funny. That's because funny. It's like, the, again, if you want it too bad, it's just, it doesn't, everybody picks up on that. They smell it. It's a vibe you put off. There's something, and it's weird that I did this during the pandemic too, but I, I was really, I was starting to watch a lot of interviews of some of my favorite actors, mm. you know, Sam Rockwell, um, Chevy Chase, just oh, cool. all, I've, I'm all over the place. Steve Martin. Yeah. Um, I, I watched a lot of rock star interviews and there's just a certain way that the majority of them kind of carry themselves because they've already made it. They don't need to prove anything to anybody. Yep. They've already made it. Yeah. They're where they're, they they want to be. Yeah. It's like, hey man, this is what, how they are. They're not trying too hard. They're not putting on an act. They're not putting on this fake persona. It's just they're, they are who they are and they've already achieved what they want to achieve. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like, I've got, I've hit the top. I'm cool. I'm good. I don't need anything else. I'm fine. Yeah. And it's just, wow, I need to start kind of picking up on that vibe. Mm. You know, and kind of just, you know, and they say you, you you are who you associate yourself with. So if you are hanging out with people that are positive, that are going places, that are doing things, that are achieving their goals, writing them down, knocking them out, and like, whoa, versus the ones, and I've gotten rid of probably a lot, a strong, solid group of friends that I thought were friends that were really kind of, really not, kind of just users and negative, down, depressed, pissed off half the time, bored, just like, eh, I'm not making it, what's going on, is it me? I'm like, I can't 
be around yeah, you right bring now, you dude. Down. It yeah. brings you down. That's a that's a universal life one. I don't think that's. I think any career. But that's you'll true. Feel that's that. anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you a bit of a? Are you a book guy at all? Lately, I haven't. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, there's a book that I really like. I this was one of my pandemic reads, and it was "Obstacle Is the Way" by okay. Ryan Holiday. Okay. And a specific quote you're talking about, like actor interviews. I'm pretty sure it's George Clooney, and he quotes him. But he's talking about getting gigs. And it's funny because I really don't know a lot on film, but I remember this quote. And Clooney was like, you're getting rejected by all these auditions. You're going in these auditions, everything, everything, everything. And he's like, you have to think like you're coming from this place or the traditional mindset is you're coming to this place. Please give me this role, please, please. But he's like, you have to think there's a casting director or I don't know the titles, but oh, yeah. there's a person who's responsible who needs to fill that role, who needs to get the best person. Yes. And he's like, you can come there with the, uh, the mentality of I've just solved your problem. That's, I am yeah. the perfect candidate. I'm the perfect role or I'm the perfect person for this role. Amen. Yes. And like, I, even though I'm not in that industry, like I, I really love that mindset and I love to like go into things of like, Hey, congrats. Like you just found the best person. Like I'm oh, the best sure. person for this. Congrats. I'm here. You just found yes. me. And it's like, and you have to know that without like, here's the thing. I would never say it out loud. I would never vocal into, Hey, by the way, guys, I'm here. Oh, yeah, fuck no. That's I mean? so like, cocky. You could never do no, that thing. Be that like douchebag guy It's that internal all. energy that you give yourself of like, good, like great day for them. I just showed up and I'm the best, you know? Oh yeah. yeah. You have to be your, your own cheerleader, your own pep talker, your own motivational speaker. You have to be all those guys. When you walk in that door and, and know that, like you said, I'm going to be the solution to your problem. Yeah. I'm going to give you exactly what you're looking for. And yeah. if you don't like what I'm having off, that's fine too. That's cool. I'll just yeah. I'll do it somewhere else. Hell yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? And not and literally not care. And I, it's so much easier said than done, of course. And it is hard to like, how do I not care? But I really care and I want this. And I just stopped looking at the rates, what it paid, who it shoots with. Because all this unnecessary baggage and crap that you just bring in, they're like, oh my gosh, I really want this. It shoots with this big actor that I really love and it pays this much. It's double scale and I, it's going to shoot in Mexico for two months. Oh, I want this. Uh, I don't look at any of that anymore. Yeah. I'll yeah. look at that once I book it. Then I'm like, oh, wow, sweet. There's a double <laughs> little treat. Oh, will tell you. Yeah. You know? That's I cool. I treat everyone like it's just a really crappy, low paying job that I probably don't want to book. Just to keep your mental, like yeah. to just keep you chill and uh-huh. not like oh. totally. Yeah. And then you watch everybody else kind of go in there and lose it and freak out and panic and <gasps> sure, you know? sure. So then talk to me. Like my, two questions that I have is, um, to my understanding, and I didn't want to go too too deep on your story as I did my research because I like to kind of like naturally be like what whoa. Mm-hmm. But <clears throat> to my understanding, you've had quite a lot of success uh, in the space of commercials, and that was intentional. Yeah. Like your dad was in advertising and then you kind of found a niche in these commercials mm-hmm. and kind of just like held it down and killed it. And I, I think now a little bit before we just started recording, you're focusing more on other stuff now. But in that, as far as commercials, just anybody listening to mm-hmm. this and like, what's that like? Like, what does a what does a bad commercial pay? What does a good commercial pay? Like what's, how much time does that take? Like I'm genuinely like, I'm new here. Oh, I'm no, no, yeah, no, totally. No, yeah. that's, that's the fun part. That's the exciting part. I think for me too, that keeps me kind of wanting to do this more and it keeps me kind of thrilled to do this because obviously over years you get kind of, you lose a little bit of the passion and the fun, the flame. I think I read somewhere that um, when DiCaprio booked his first big like movie role, he was like so happy. He literally punched a hole through his ceiling and he was like, I go, I want that kind of excitement. Cause that's kind of gone right now. I don't really, I don't have that anymore, but I, I, I get it back on certain things that I'm passionate about that I really like. And the commercial thing has been lately over the years, like when I first started, you could literally, like, I think my first acting coach bought like his house in the Hills on like three commercials that he booked for that year. It was what? like a beer banks and automobile commercial. So three top paying residual paying commercials. I was like, Whoa. And that he, you're that you bought a house off that because it was crazy residuals back in the day, uh-huh. like mind blowing. You book two spots a year, you you're set for the year. You don't have to work at all. You what? you book those two spots, and you're just literally every time you turn the TV on, they're like, oh, there's a VW spot again. There's a Bank of America spot again. That guy's getting paid. Whoa. There's not a lot of that going on anymore. That's the union jobs that we're paying residual wise. And was that like back in the day, like a smaller sum up front? And then they're just like, you're going to stack on residuals? Yeah, you get the base pay for the day. And then you get the residuals every single time it airs. And if it goes foreign, domestic, um, online, all these, all these different places, if it plays before the theater, 
and the movies and oh, all yeah. these different perks that you're getting and all this stuff. And Whoa. it's like, and then you get a holding fee if they decide to not air it for a little bit, then they want to bring it back. And then they might take a clip of your spot and put it in another commercial. You get paid. It's just, it's nuts. So all that's the, like keeping your publishing as a songwriter and like oh, you're yeah, getting exactly. your streaming. It's, exactly. Same okay. Thing. All right. Bet, bet. I, I see was, you. Yeah. So residuals used to be a thing and you used to fucking stack cash Jam. on that. Like kill. You could literally, like I said, buying mortgages, buying cars, you're buying, it's, it's crazy. But Office. now I think they decided, well, hey, you know what? Wait a minute. Um, Okay, let's just say, look at that thing you're drinking right there. Mm. Uh, they have an option. They can either pay the actors, get really, really good actors, mm. and pay them residuals and pay it costs a lot of money. Or I can get actors that can just be, that'll get the job done. They'll be, they'll be good. They'll be accepted. They'll be okay. And I can pay them one check, one time. Okay. That's it. No matter how many times we air it, we can play it 5,000 times. Yeah. That actor's only getting one check. Okay. And that's they're... happening yeah. more. I see. And you can't blame them because why wouldn't, you know, if I was in a, if I had the, the option one to pay thousands of dollars or just a small little check here for, you know, I would go that route. And like what, like in 2021, if you're like booking some commercial for a drink or something like that, like what's a check? Is it like crazy varying or like, what's that look like? A lot of them vary. A lot of them, like I said, if it's something like a little bit higher end, like Walmart or Burger King or something like that, they're going to be a little bit more. You might get something like 3,500 to 5,000. Uh, I've seen some even go as low as like two, fifteen, a thousand. I'm like, and those are the ones I just don't like. I don't think I'm gonna do that. That's not Whoa. worth it because it's just gonna. There's no point doing all this just to work to get a small little check. That by the time you pay your manager and agent and get taxed, it you're gonna oh. walk with like hundreds. So it's not really. So like actors that you're seeing on TV in commercials are like getting like a couple grand. Yeah, depending the majority of them, with the exception of like the flows from Progressive, Most Interesting Man in the World, Captain Obvious um like at&t girl those the majority of those are going to be union based so right. if you get a campaign like that you're rolling like what you're about making... like the voice of the gecko from geico oh yeah he's doing like good yeah he's doing really good yeah 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 <laughs> that guy's doing great holy shit okay wow that's interesting so but, then like yeah. if somebody is listening to this now and they're interested in getting into acting like do you still think that like is that a good spot to start is that something like just do it if you're passionate about it or like like it, it's a, definitely a great place to start. A lot of the guys like Aaron Paul, Brian Cranston, a lot of these guys that you see now that are big timers started off doing commercials for a yeah. reason. I call them 30 second sitcoms. It's easy. There's not a lot of heavy lifting there's, as far as dialogue wise. You're not given three or four or five, six pages of script, copy to memorize. It's literally probably just a couple chunks of lines and paragraphs here, one yeah. page. If it's the 30 second spot, which most, most spots are 30 seconds, some are 60. Uh, but very, very few. So most are just 30 seconds. Quick, on to the next, on to the next. If you're the weight, if you're the main guy, the hero, they call it in the spot, you're going to maybe have, you know, it's something you can memorize within like five minutes. Of, you know what I mean? Right, yeah. So which is really easy when you're first getting started because if you're like I was and I was just terrified when I first started, I was, I get so nervous. And there's a reason why they don't have you hold the copy in your hand when you go in the room and read because I would literally be that guy that was just like, just over here, Colgate, I love it because it, it really <laughs> makes my shit. You know, I mean, I, I would like shake so much. Yeah. And then I put the script down and then I'd look down, I'm like, oh, my knee, stop it. Holy you crap. Know? So like you kind of just had to like get it in your head and go. Dude, you had to just like, okay, I'm going to, and I'm probably going to butcher this. I'm going to mess it up. I'm going to forget all the dialogue. Sometimes I would literally go over it for like seven hours straight in my room, in the shower, in the car, on the way there. And I'd nail it. I'm like, I'm going to kill this when I get in there. And I get in the room. Oh, sh what's the first line? Uh, can I st stop, please? Hold on. I'm going to my back pocket. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. Okay. Oh, Pepsi. Choice of you generation. I love it. We all love it. My family loves it. Okay. <laughs> uh, hold on. <laughs> I, was, I was that bad where I was yeah. like, dude, I can't remember. Because, the, it's, again, the nerves. You get right. these people in there. And if you get the call back, it was even more nerve wracking because you've got the ad agent, the client, the writer, the producer, the session director, sometimes the cast director. They're all in there. And... Sometimes they're like staring right at you, all eyes on you. Other times they're not even looking at you at all. Act, puppet, act. Yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But I figured, well, the more rooms I get into, the more comfortable I'm going to get, the more I'm just going to really just give it my all and just have fun and just not care, like I said, and just do my best. But those, those nerves, man, yeah. were, were, my, were, were my enemy for about five, five to six years where it was just like, every and no wonder my agent fired me i'd fire me too sure. i wasn't doing anything i wasn't bringing him any money i was bombing my auditions i, I was going out like partying the night before and being up to like 2 a.m and then trying to like function and survive on like three hours sleep when i have like a 10 o'clock 
you know, early call audition in Santa Monica. I live in the Valley. I'm like, I get there. I'm like, <laughs> right, <laughs> so right. it made sense that I wasn't really. But then I started kind of treating a little bit more obviously professional. I'm like, okay, I've got to, I've probably got to show up on time. <laughs> I've got to be prepared. Some I've basics. got to be off book. Yeah. yeah. Just the basics. Yeah. <laughs> so with that though, like as I think that's really cool that you share that, right? Because I think that we talk about like how cool podcasts are and how you can learn from yeah. people's stories and people sharing. And I think oftentimes now, especially with social media, like we all want to be amazing at things, but we forget how much time it takes to be amazing. Like 10,000 all... hours, they say. If you want to master something, 10,000 hours. Malcolm Gladwell. Crazy, yeah. right? Yeah. Outliers, yeah. Uh, I don't know if actually he invented that, but he talks about <laughs> yeah. it. No, but it's true. Um, and that's about, I think it's about right with anything, with, whether you're a drummer or a guitarist, to sing, whatever. Mm -hmm. You're not going to just pick it up for with the very, ex there's an exception with some that are just like naturally whoa, really gifted. And those people yeah. usually get discovered pretty quickly because it's like, okay, there's something special about you. Sure, yeah. You know? Yeah. But usually it's the people that have to do their hard time right. that put in the weight. And I think my first manager meeting ever, he was like, okay, um, do you have 10 years to spare before things really even take off? I mean, 10 years of probably not booking anything. Do you Can you waste that much time, spare that much time? I go, yeah, yeah, cool. He goes, okay, you, you got a shot. I'm not going to sign you because you don't have any credits, but you know. I was uh, like, dude, jeez, this just keeps getting worse and harder and uh, harder. What were you doing on this? Like, were you working like random side gigs and shit? Oh, I was just doing to... everything under the sun to make money as far as I would literally go to like car auctions, buy these crappy cars, fix them up, go to pick up our places, put them on eBay. I was doing drop shipping. I would wrap my car. I would, because in LA, like I said, you have to hustle. I'm I'm not talking about like selling CDs on the corner at five bucks a piece. Here, buy my rap CD. No, I don't want to buy that. I I mean, really, just like hustling. And but there's those again back to the reading thing. I'd hear these things that people were like, okay, work smarter, not harder. Use mm. your brain, not your back. Mm. Let your money work for you. All these things that I just were like, what does that mean? Mm. Oh, now I get it. You have to really I and but also keep your day open enough to be able to be at that call. So when your agent manager calls, listen, you need to be in Santa Monica in two hours for this audition. I, I didn't want to be that guy that's like, well, let me ask my boss and see if I can get off of the day. I knew I had to be available at all times. That's hard. So that was a really big push to get me in to show that, okay, David, he may not be good. Yeah. He, he may not show up, you know, but here's, no, but he, he at least he shows up yeah. he, when, when we want him to. Um, he's, you know, and I was, so that goes a long way. I think Woody, Woody Allen said that once too. Half the, half the battle is showing up. So I would like to show up whether I was prepared or not, I'd always be ready to work, willing to do what I could, willing to learn. And I'd fall on my face so many times. But like I said, the more you do it, the more you get up, you pick yourself up, you brush it off. I know it sounds like a stupid quote and a bumper sticker, but it's it's true. It's like you you really have to like fall on your face so many times and get up, wipe the, the, the dirt off and just do it again and be prepared to fail, yeah. be prepared to lose. And be you know, so I did all that. I'm like, this is crazy. What am I doing? But I knew that I had to be that guy that was available because I, again, I was friends with my manager at the time who was like, dude, I have so many clients that literally are turning bookings down because they can't get off their job. They, their boss won't let them leave. Mm -hmm. I had a boss at the time. I worked at like Gold's Gym and I go, listen, I got an audition for tomorrow. You know, can I get off at two? He goes, you got another one? I go, well, like yeah, that, I have another yeah, one. Yeah. I hope I'll have another one the day after tomorrow, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you mean another one? That's only twice this week, dude. <laughs> so I was like, this is probably not going to work. Yeah. I was doing some shifty, shady stuff too. I, I, as I was working at Gold's Gym, I was like, uh, I shouldn't even say this, but like literally I, I was like running my own little juice bar thing out of there and like selling drinks and out of there when the boss wasn't there, the owner. I was like selling like malt, like shakes, protein shakes, making my own little protein things in the back. You know, three bucks a pop, dude. You know, Holy like, fuck, dude, he came I in, he was love that. Coffee. He's like, what the fuck are you doing? Dude, well, now Gold's Gym has that little smoothie bar. So you were just out here pioneering ideas, what you were doing. He was so pissed, dude. Holy and I'll never forget shit. that. I'm like, well, that kind of make money. You're only paying me like at the time, like, you know, five bucks an hour. God, but that's what everybody dude. gets paid here, man. You get oh, to work out for free, bro. I go, that's not enough. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, it was so brutal. Did you have a moment where you were able to be like, cool, I don't have to do this side shit. Like it's working. Like how many years in were you? Ooh, probably like eight years on my eighth or ninth Holy year, fuck. I think. Yeah. Where I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. I don't have to do anything else now. I can just do this. Holy fuck. Yeah. So it helps you really appreciate it more. That's so encouraging. I mean, it's not encouraging. That fucking <laughs> sucks. <laughs> but like, it's you want to cool. wait nine years to do shit? Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's cool that it happened. Yeah. 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 Well, I think, again, like I think everybody, they've done their hard time at some point it's gonna like click mm. into gear where it's like oh this is a nice running machine now where i don't have to keep like stopping for you know to change the tire check the air to the radiator cool it's overheating what's going on let me put this mm -hmm. here it's just a nice running well-oiled machine at some point 
which it should be after you you take care of it for so long, you nurture it, you, you, you treat it well, you do the classes, all this stuff. And everybody's journey is obviously different. To me, that's the fun part now is because you never know. And this is what keeps me kind of going. This is the drug for me. If I had to relate this to some kind of thing that I was addicted to, mm. I would say it's definitely not knowing what's going to happen tomorrow. Like Ooh. getting, you know what I mean? Like a nice phone call. Like I got this random one last week. My manager's like, dude, I, I, I think I might be getting punked. They want to try you out for the village people, for the cowboy. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, what? You're messing with me, right? He goes, no, 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 I'm being serious, but I think someone's messing with me. I go, well, let's look into it. I go, well, wait a minute. No, I actually had an audition for something to do with the village people about three years ago, but I don't think, he goes, no, 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 that was it. You did this, but now, and they saw your tape. They watched your tape. They like you. They lost the cowboy for some reason. I think he's a little bit too old now to be touring and stuff like that. So they're looking for a new cowboy. It goes to Russia next week. Um, but you got I me, mean, what? So this is, but you got to learn all the song choreograph. I'm like, I don't do it. So I'm watching videos like, oh, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, I'm see. oh I, I, I can do that. It's just weird shit. And I'm like, I, I don't know. This is, this seems kind of weird, but you know, but it was one of those things where it just kind of hit. I'm like, this is, who would have thought going to sleep on like a Thursday night, mm -hmm. waking up Friday, thinking I could potentially be the next village people cowboy. You know what I mean? It was just like so weird. It ended up not working out. They wanted the guy to be vaxxed. Within 20, and also to, and to have it for 21 days. I just got vaxxed like two days before. They're like, mm. oh, we really need someone that's because the guy's a little bit older, a little bit worried. Um, and you're going to Russia, there's restrictions that they have to, you have to have this vaccination for this for so long to enter. I'm like, oh, okay. So it didn't work out. So I wasn't like, oh man. I was like, okay, that's cool. Yeah. I was just happy for the opportunity. Yeah, that's great. I, yeah. love, I love the way you said that. That was like, you don't wake up or you don't go to bed on Thursday being like, I'm going to get the call tomorrow morning and they're going to ask me to be the cowboy in the village people. Like, Ever. That's I would have thought about that. But yeah. I was like, dude, I, then I'm thinking in my own head, well, you asked the right guy mm -hmm. because what I've done in music and I could pick up choreograph moves and all that stuff in probably a day. That's totally cool. But it was just so bizarre and so weird. And it happened to be after I was kind of in that, workout thing all the time too where i'm like okay yeah. i'm getting i'm in better shape now this makes perfect sense because half those guys are walking around with their shirts off just like why <laughs> you know so i'm like this could be, this could totally work i love this <laughs> it was so weird but i was like you know what whether this works or not it was still a fun thing just to be considered for to think about and i just and i went to bed that night just literally just like laughing mm -hmm. and then i was like you know what half of my brain right now could say oh my gosh that sucks why didn't that work out but then the other half of my brain took over the pep talking cheerleader motivating type said, no, 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 David, that's good. You need to be here because that mm -hmm. means something better is going to happen when you are here to take it. Because if you're in Russia right now, guess what? You're not going to be able to accept what's going to come your way. Right. And then I got like a TV show and a couple commercials that ended up paying like 10 times more than what would have paid. You know what I mean? So it yeah. all works out. Yeah. So me and Seth, if, if I would have chosen to have been that guy, they're like, oh, this sucks. Why did they get Yeah, I could. And nothing would have happened. I would have been bummed for whatever reason. But then I'm like, no, 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 this is cool. Yeah. Let some guy... And turns out the guy that booked it really was at, at the end of his rope. He was like, I'm done. He was almost going to give up. Same thing. He's like, and he was thrilled. He loved the band. He was just, it was perfect for him. That's it. I was like, that's great. This guy really needed it, really wanted it. That's awesome. Good for him. I, Give that to him. You know, if it's meant to be again for some reason, they, it might come around again. That's totally cool. But if not, that's cool too. Like, it's just this attitude that I really am just trying to kind of embrace more now of really like i said just not caring just kind of accepting for what it is and yeah. just thanking god the whole way there like hey thank you for bringing me this quirky weird odd uh, you know opportunity mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> and, yeah and i'm sure again there'll probably be another one next week that's yeah. just as odd just yeah. as crazy just as cool just as nuts i but like I'm, that i like that again that's what keeps me kind of really staying in this position versus going on some of my friends are like i don't know how you do it. don't you want to get a comfortable job and get a steady paycheck i'm like yes i do but no i don't because i don't want that i don't want to know exactly what i'm going to make from day to day mm. what my paycheck's going to be at the end of the year what i'm going to be able to afford i want that feeling of that mentally messed up feeling of like i might go broke tomorrow or i might be in the millionaire zone tomorrow i don't even know you know what i mean and it's Dude. such a rush Dude, it is, it's like a lot of people talk about that with like entrepreneurs and it's like, mm -hmm. do you really want to be this? Because like, yeah, when you see the highlight reel of that, it's sick, private jet, you're so rich, yeah. blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but it's like the reality of like the lowest lows that get you to those high highs yep. and like it's not stable. Yeah. And it's a really scary thing. And I think like, I don't know, I, I think that the people that chase that, it's almost like you, you, 
there's no other option. Like you have to. Yeah. I don't know. It's terrifying. It's not like everybody wants it. It's not like everyone's stoked to be like, I don't know how the fuck this is going to come together. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like, there is something to that. And it, it's, it's exciting. It's a it's different, a, it's a rush. And it really is. That's the fun part for me. Cause like I said, you, it, it's so funny. Like there's the private jet. Yeah. They don't talk about the guy that's on that private jet that used to drive a Dodge Dart with a missing catalytic converter. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's just like struggling day to day, hand yeah. to mouth, check to check. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's probably going to live in his car the next week. They don't talk about that stuff. It's just because that's that's the brutal truth of that too. There's so many. I used to laugh when I see these people accepting their awards and oh my gosh, I used to live in my car. It's like I think everybody at one point lived in their car that's been in this <laughs> business because it is really, it is brutal. It's rough. It's 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 destroys your everything. Mm. But it's also that way for a reason. I just heard John Voigt last week say when he was at his lowest point, when he was on his on his knees praying to God, please, what's going on? Why is this going on? Why is my life falling apart? Why are my relationships failing? Why is my, you know? And the voice in his head said, it's supposed to be. Mm. I'm like, oh, wow. And that was his like aha moment. I was like, yeah, because it, it is supposed to be hard mm. for everybody mm. in the beginning. But guess what? It's that bitter with a sweet thing that, you know, you have to have those failing moments where you fall face down on your face. and just like, I give up. I quit. I'm done. This is too much. But if you get past that and you hurdle past that garbage, oh, whoa, I, I did it. Mm -hmm. You know, now I'm on top of the water on the raft with a drink in hand feeling great versus the guy that's been, you know, for years <gasps> just trying to stay afloat. Yeah. And, but I love that. I, it keeps you really humble, keeps you grounded, keeps you really, really grateful. And it's all, you got to be grateful, man. You can't be chasing for the bigger, better thing. I'm never happy. I used to be that way. I was never happy with what I had. I was like, was chasing for the bigger, better thing and writing down goals that were like, well off my, out of my reach and i'm like but now i take a lot of time to really just kind of look at the goals that i've already knocked off and be like wow i did that that's great thank you god this is amazing i just did this and this and this and i'm not really looking at the ones that i haven't achieved yet getting bummed at myself for not achieving it. that's cool i like your mindset too like i very much see that and i i think that like that is very again universally applicable yeah um to anything it and really I, is. I feel that i feel that so now as you've kind of like mastered that mindset or you've worked to master that and understood that a little bit better you have gotten out of the just swimming in the rapids you had a lot of success with commercials and all that and i believe like you're kind of turning a new page even with your career and focusing more on film tv yeah other things mm -hmm. what Tell me what's it was more like what's just, up to? Yeah, just kind of like a, like a challenge. I I, thought, I got so kind of comfortable in that commercial world in that zone. It was like I said, really just kind of a little bit more chill and relaxed. Not a lot of heavy lifting as far as dialogue wise. So I was like, you know what? Let me try something because I was always really afraid. And I started looking at movies now, and I started watching these actors that were like that were literally taking on like three to five to six minute scenes without the guy cutting. I'm like, whoa, whoa! How did you memorize all that without yeah. the you know, be no no cut. Yeah, that's crazy. Like that always scared the hell out of me. Uh -huh. Theater has scared the hell out of me. I always said I hate theater. I, I hate it because I can't do it. You know what uh, I mean? Yeah, I can't yeah, memorize yeah. two hours worth of stuff on stage. So I always always like, oh, that that scared the hell out of me. So I've started really just kind of taking on new challenges, saying, okay, I'm going to start doing that. I'm going to start taking these little thirty second commercials and making them longer and longer and then starting to really challenge my brain to memorize and study more and take on these different characters in these roles. There's no reason why I shouldn't be able to do that. So you start by doing little co-stars here, which is like the guy basically just delivering the pizza on a TV show. Hey, someone order a pizza? Cool. Yeah. I care. That guy, you need that guy to kind of carry the other guys. But that's just that you got to start somewhere. And then I started doing a ton of those. And I think, okay, now I want to start going for guest star, which is the guy that's obviously in the scene, in the, the show, a little bit more he's coming back and he's got more lines more dialogue then you get after guest star you've got the recurring so now this guy's on the tv show for two three four five times then you get series regular which is like you're on the show all the time you're carrying the show so there's all these kind of like again if you're in the goal mindset you're setting these goals to be like okay now i want to be this 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 um which is pretty exciting and i you know what and again speaking of motivation because i can tell you're the same way too where we go and kind of come and go in these little motivational Parts like I can literally go, and that's how messed up my mind is. I can go from one hour thinking like I'm done, I'm screwed. This is I hate this business. I'm over. This is sucks. What am I doing? I want to go do something else. And then like literally an hour later, oh, this is exciting. I want to do this. Let me do this one now. I want to reach out to this agent. I'm gonna do this. And I heard my girlfriend works for an actress. I can't say who she is, but she works with this actress. That, and she goes, she goes, I gotta tell you a story when I come home today. Oh yeah, yeah. She comes home. She goes, uh, so I overheard her talking on the phone to her agent, 
She goes, oh, no, 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 no. If they want me, they're going to pay more than 250. No, 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 no. I was like, well, wait a minute, what? She goes, she goes, yeah, she was negotiating for a five-day movie part for 200. They wanted to offer her 250,000 for five days. She goes, no, no, no. They want me, they're going to pay more than that. I was like, and that to me, I was like, oh yeah. Like I got excited. I'm like, I want to be that. That's, I'm going to be that guy. Not that she's being selfish, mm. but again, you want me in my time. You want this. So this is what I want. Yeah. No, yeah. So she's telling her agent and the agent probably went back and said, okay, she'd love to do the film, but you're going to have to pay her more. Yeah. And of course they're like, okay, we'll do it. Or again, it's like, it's not like some fake, like cocky, like I'm so fucking awesome. I'm no, no, this. never. That's just gross. Exactly. But it's like, I do think sometimes what I'm hearing in that and what, what would inspire me in that is like, sometimes we forget how, like, we forget that you're allowed to think as big as you want. Oh, yeah. Right? Like, this person is like, I'm worth 250K, like, for a day or whatever, <laughs> yeah, right? right? Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, to some people, you'd be like, fuck off, like, uh -huh. the nerve. Yeah. But like, it, it's more like believing in yourself and like stopping and thinking like, why not? go to the moon with this idea why can't that be me yeah. right and it's like yeah cool then reverse engineer and figure out how to become that valuable and deliver services or or yes. whatever to get there uh -huh. but I, I do find that inspiring when you hear people because we're all human right we're oh, yeah. all the same we all the, the same, same 24 that, hours yeah. so it's like when you see people at that level i do find that encouraging to be like think really fucking big yes at that thing you love uh-huh because then it's just reverse engineering it. Exactly. And it's just that person proving that it can be done. That to me is what's inspired. Yes. So much of what I hear in your story is just like owning it and accepting the challenge, right? Like yeah. you can look at things two different ways. You can see all the people out here and all the people in every audition room that's sweet bragging to you about this, this, and this, yeah. and this. And you can get jaded and upset. Or you can just pick, this is a fucking sick challenge. Yeah. And like, how can I step up and how can I find my edge and all of that? And I, I like that a lot. Like, I feel like that's such a cool mentality. And again, I really haven't had too many actors on the show. So to hear it from a different perspective, it's all a mindset that I'm very familiar with. Yeah, yeah. But I, I have taken a lot out of that to know like, okay, cool. It's, it's, it's other professions as well. Yeah. And I hope listeners that hear this also kind of think of like, it doesn't really matter. Like maybe you chase this, maybe you chase that, whatever your field is, yeah. we all kind of have those similar struggles and it's encouraging to hear how you've gone through that. I like that Because well, you're an entertainer too. You're an entrepreneur as well. You're like, you know, and it's like, we do these things, which kind of knowing, like I said, how, how crazy it can be going into it. But again, we also do it for, we like it. Yeah. Know? Obviously oh, totally. music feeds our soul. It's just, it's something that we love and we're passionate about. Who would have thought that your acting landed you on a random music podcast years later? There you go, see? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, <dude. laughs> love that. Well, that's, that's like two like-minded people, like I said, that have a like, passion, joy for music. And it's just, there's nothing. I mean, my mom used to literally just like rock me to sleep with, to Fleetwood Mac. I mean, it's just like, I had a pair of drumsticks in my hand at age five and it was just like my dad and mom both played piano my brother played guitar we jam all the time like i said that was just i would i was going to concerts at like in junior high going to see like you know yt and just like all the iron maiden all these just like really aggressive just really just solid tight bands and i'd go see live shows that was like all i wanted to do yeah. all i wanted to do you know and it's like but I think once any musician can relate to that, it's just, you, you don't, you don't do it for the money either. You do it because you really love it. Mm. You, you're passionate about it. I mean, it, it, I'll be honest, it got a little bit old packing up because, you know, this huge drum set. And of course it got a little easier because I you know, got down to like the basic kick, tom, snare, floor, and a few cymbals. So it wasn't as hard, but still taking that and chug, oh, bringing it down every night and driving it to like these, these gigs and then taking it back home, sticking it in my car and just like, it's a lot of work too, you know, oh, dude, I, I came from a world of touring. I, I know, I know the drum set strike all too well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just but. like, oh, so in that regard, in that sense, I don't really, because a lot of my band members still are, are now still doing other stuff and they're like, oh, and I get to kind of live through them a little bit too. And I'll look at their pages and how they're, how, how well they're doing. And they get to, I can still see they have that joy and that stuff. And it's just like, wow, I do miss that. I, you know, and my girls asked me last week, she goes, if you had a choice, if I could tell you right now, I've got a magic wand, you're going to be doing what you love doing, acting and being one of your favorite TV shows or being on a well and a good band that you really love the music of and you're touring with the band of your dreams. I go, that's the dumbest question I've ever heard. What do you think? Of course, 
I'd rather be touring in a band all day long. No shit. A hundred percent. There's no, no even, shit. not even a second thought of like, oh, but I might miss something. I no. Like it would hands down every time that I would be touring. Could I not argue though that you're uh, idolizing what you perceive that experience is like? Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Like, right? Yeah. I because think, yeah. if you didn't do that and like all you have in your head is like the biggest version of it and what you view that as like, granted, you played shows, you did your thing, you were in it. But like, I think we all feel a grass is greener moment, right? Like totally I true. love like cars so much. And as a kid, I was always like, I want to race cars, right? Yeah. But all I see is my fun favorite parts of racing. Like, I don't know how miserable the accommodations are, what the travel <laughs> yeah, days yeah. are like, or the the mental and physical and taxing and injuries and this is and that's and You're seasons. Right. Like, I don't know that part. All I can be is like, I want to go fast. Right? Totally. Yeah. <laughs> so like, who knows? Right? That's a great way to look at it. You're right. Because the grass is, I've always done that too. And you do hear the stories of people that are touring that are like, oh my gosh, I just want to be back home with my family. Mm -hmm. I miss my dog. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. I just, I really want to be in the same place, not a different hotel every night. And it takes a toll on them. And it, it takes a, a definitely a different kind of person that can do that because a lot of people don't want to do that. And I always wonder, like, what would you, what were you thinking? You had the best band in the world and you don't want to tour anymore? Are you crazy? Yeah, dude. But the guys are doing it for like, you know, we don't know what he's going through, the accommodations. Right. Or like, I mean, maybe you just like, you've won the game. Like maybe people, like they go. go and they do it and they've done their venues and they've done all of totally. that. And they start a new game where they want to start a family and things like that. Like You're I right. see that a lot. So You're right. I don't know. That's a good way to look at it. I think I need, and that's me again, probably needing to step back and be a little bit more grateful for what I do have instead of thinking about, oh, I really wish I had this. Yeah, yeah. But I think it's just human. We all tend to kind of oh, totally. do that and wish we had something different. Oh, I like I I love my white car, but I wish I had a black car. Exactly. You know what yeah, I mean? It's just that's <laughs> stupid. That's just thing. the human nature. Gosh, but... I'm straight hair, man. I wish I had curly hair. <laughs> yeah, that's all brown always, eyes, man. Yeah. Green eyes. I'm tired of this. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just the dumbest thing that we're never ever happy with. And I think that's that's not really that's not a good way to live. Right, right. <laughs> no, but I, I think it's cool. And I'm so glad that you joined. Like, thank you, dude. This was so cool. And it's been great talking with you, man. I think like understanding just all these different professions is something that I'm obsessed with. So uh, thank you for shining light on a whole new one. Of and course. Like, yeah, thanks for having me. It's great. Sounds dude. cool. It's awesome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. You. So there you have it. My new friend, David Banks and his story. I thought that was a really cool one. I loved hearing all of the parallels in his acting and music career, and I hope you enjoyed it as well. If you did and you made it all the way here to the end, there's a couple favors that you can do for me and the podcast and for David and all that good stuff. The first one is just sharing it with your friends, be it social media, telling them in person, texting them a link. If you found this interesting and you share it with somebody that also might find it interesting, it really helps me. You can leave feedback on Apple Podcasts, leave five stars, leave a nice little rating or a review. That helps it get discovered and suggested to even more people there. If you're watching on YouTube and you haven't subscribed yet, hit a little subscribe there. That's super helpful as well. Leave a comment. Let me know what other people you want to hear from. Music, acting, any type of entertainment, anything. I love talking to new people and sharing their stories on this podcast. If you want to go above and beyond, you can always support the podcast on the Patreon. That's patreon.com slash where are all my friends. There's a ton of bonus content there. I'll mail you some stickers. I'll write you a little postcard, all that good stuff. I think that just about says it. Thank you so much for listening. I'll be back next week with another episode.